Wednesday, people talking sports, dude. Yeah, man. I mean, we're really taking the show to another level today. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. Yeah, I mean, uh, so much in the news. Animal rights activists, did you hear about this guy oh, in France? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got gored by a bull. Sure. He runs, an animal rights activist runs on, I assume he was yelling something like, have any of you seen Food Inc? <laughs> and then the bull stabbed him and he was like, never mind. That's probably what happened. Yeah. Afterwards, he just like went to <laughs> Burger King. <laughs> just got a million whoppers. <laughs> He's done. Yeah. It's like, you know what's interesting? It's like we talk about how barbaric football is in sure. this country. Bullfighting is huge in so yeah. many countries. Yeah. It's absolutely. men dancing around a bull and then stabbing him to death. Oh, totally. Like, you know, we like, we're like, oh man, NFL touchdown uh, celebrations are excessive. They, like, Terrell Owens never like took out a switchblade and stabbed <laughs> the football. <laughs> Speaking of football, you hear about Armageddon drone? Sure. Is it drawn or drone? Drawn. 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 Armageddon drawn. Just signed with the Jets. Right. Uh, he was named after the movie Armageddon. All right. So I'm going to guess he's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's like the rumor, too, is that the Jets are like purposely tanking their season. So they're just like, ah, we'll just get guys with cool names. Yeah, they, they also signed care. a running back named the day after Demario Johnson. <laughs> Yeah. What else we got? Uh, Ryan Eggold's here from the Blacklist. Yeah, that's pretty huge. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty big, right? Yeah. I, got a, I got a black head. <laughs> right here, yeah. look at that. They can't afford a makeup team here. Look at this. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I have to go on air looking like, a, like an adolescent. We're back on People Talking Sports. I'm joined by Ryan Eggold. Thanks for joining us, man. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. From uh, The Blacklist. Yes, indeed. We had Amir Arison on the show. Oh, did you? I'm very sorry. <laughs> did he ruin everything or did it go okay? He was great. He, he was, was great? He was, you know what? He trashed Kevin Garnett. <laughs> what? Yeah, he said he's overrated. <laughs> and, then, uh, I, and then I said, all right, well, give me an actor who's overrated. And he was like, all right, I'll give you an actor. And I was like, all right. He's like, nah, I can't. <laughs> so he just gave me a tease. Can we get Kevin Garnett on the show and Amir at the same time? I would just like let that. him Just let him speak his mind? Are you a big are you a big hoops guy? Uh, yeah, man, I'm a big Knicks fan for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah, and you're from California. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, the show is also a Lakers fan. I'm from, I grew up in California. Yeah. So which was the team you grew up in in LA? Who was on that team? The first basketball game I ever went to was Clippers, um, but then it was Lakers for a long time. Um, that was a rough run for the Clippers when their franchise guy was Pooh Richardson. It was like the lowest of the low. It was really, yeah. really bad. Yeah, really bad. But really fun because they were like such the underdog. Then the Clippers like got cool again recently, and I was like, no. Nah. It's like when a band you like gets popular. Right. You know, and you're like, no. But uh, I like the Clippers when they sucked. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That was cool. And you work with, I mean, James Spader regularly. Yeah. I've seen that like in interviews. He's he's like your guy. You like him a lot, right? He, yeah, yeah. He's cool. He's cool. He's an intense dude. Yeah. How is he intense? Oh, he's so intense, man. He's just he's James is never really off, you know. And I don't I don't mean that in like a performing way. I just mean he's he's always. Um, very in, engaged, you know. He's he's very on the front foot. He's um, he's he's always thinking. And when you're working with him, he never stops being like this. Cup should be here. And like he's just very, very driven. Yeah. Yeah. And he can't turn it off at all. No. No. So you, uh, so you're on the blacklist. You have a, your own movie that you wrote. You yeah. directed. Yeah. Wrote it, directed it, edited it, put some music in it that I composed. It was really fun. It's my first time. Behind the camera, uh, we have a great cast: Justin Long and Kobe Smulders and uh, John Cho, Ron Hansen, all these great folks. Uh, Justin Long, you saw at a festival. Yeah, Justin, I bumped into a festival, and I just finished the script and um, had been thinking about him uh, in the in the role, and uh, and just got to talking, and he read it, and then he he connected. He'd had a he, it's a film I wrote sort of partly out of my own life experience, and then and then partly you know exaggerated and dr dramatized. What's the, the what's the premise? The premise is a guy going to his ex-girlfriend's wedding. Um, needless to say, he's a bit out of place. And uh, why know, does he? And why does he go to the wedding? Um, this is the part where I do that. You'll have to watch to find out. <laughs> um, he, uh, you know, it's it's a mix of things. I think I, you know, if he goes for reasons unknown to himself. I mean, sort of partly maybe to win her back, but partly to show everyone that he's totally okay with this. Um, you know, it's kind of all those things. So tell me what it's like. To, you're directing all these great actors, yeah. Peter Gallagher, right. Justin Long, uh, Luis Guzman, Dana Delaney. I mean, yeah. what is that like? I, honestly, it's great because what, when you're dealing with pros and veterans like that who really know what they're doing and they've been around the block and they've dealt with, you know, good sets, bad sets, and everything in between, they're, they're great. They know how to take care of themselves, and it's really just about you 
kind of keeping the train on the tracks and trying to tell the story that you want to tell and kind of pitching the way that you saw it and then letting it go from there and letting it, you know, letting the scene take its own shape and letting these actors do the amazing things that they do. So you cast the film kind of yourself? I did the casting along with Cassandra Kulakundis, who's an amazing I know casting her. director. Do you know, know Cassandra? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, how do you know Cassandra? Uh, I know her brother. Amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Her brother's awesome. She's the best. She casts She's, Boogie Nights and, you know, all that. That might be the best cast movie of all maybe time. Maybe ever, right? Maybe yeah. one of the best all time casts. So she's, needless to say, phenomenal and works her butt off. Um, so she's great. I, said, I saw her on a flight like uh, three years ago. Quick Cassandra anecdote. I hadn't seen her in years. She's sitting next to me on a flight and I'm really hungover because I just been eliminated from last comic standing. And I had like a, I had like a duel with Keenan Ivory Wayans. We went back and forth and it right. got, he, he like insulted me. And yeah. then I said, he said like, well, I like some of your jokes, why well, didn't like all of them? Yeah. And I said, well, I liked all your scary movie films, sarcastically, right, obviously. Right, 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 right. And it got, a, it got a big pop. Yeah. And not here, apparently. But uh, <laughs> at, uh, at the actual taping. You should have been there, but, it was hilarious. But uh, so the next morning, I'm like, I'm like, bombed I'm, I'm on the flight i turn to her and she's just like how are you i'm like ah no well she's like well i'm horrible and she told this whole story about her friend dying i was like oh, never oh, mind no. and i was hung over so in the middle of her story about her friend dying i just fell asleep <laughs> we're back with an amazing <laughs> panel best panel ever uh first off from nbc's the blacklist the maybe the best dressed uh male guest we've had i mean sockless shoe combination wow thanks Impressive. usually i get made fun of for that so i appreciate that no i i couldn't do it stinky feet uh <laughs> ryan smell great, for the record they smell great they smell good they smell very good all right yeah uh we got uh, anthony recognizing the train yesterday Woo! joey was his name yeah Joey Kickbox. <laughs> Joey Kickbox? Yeah, at Joey Kickbox on Twitter. His real last name, I couldn't pronounce it. Okay. A, a Italian guy, a tour man. What? Did he kickbox you? No, nah, he okay. was real nice. All right. He was like, you, I know you. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah well, you do? Talk like that, right? Yeah, yeah, he totally did. <laughs> the best place to get recognized for anything is New York City, for that reason. Tell me about it, yeah. movie star. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and Aaron Foley, thank you so much for coming in. Of course. You know from uh, the movie Almost Famous and me, Far From It? Aaron Foley. <laughs> Anthony wrote that joke. It wasn't good. God damn so, it, uh, he threw me under the bus immediately. <laughs> Dwayne Wade is going to meet with LeBron this week. This, I, this is like on Friends, like the couple sure. that you want to get together finally might so get together. So it's Ross and Rachel. Who, yeah. yeah. Sure. Okay. Which yeah. one's Ross and which one's Rachel? I didn't think the joke threw that hard. I gotta be honest. But, uh, As a Friends fan, I really wanted to go there. But, I mean, it's exciting. And it's like, you know that Wade's gonna get bought out. You know that he's gonna end up on the Cavs. And then they're gonna end up being like the Expendables. You know, they got, they sure. got Derrick yeah. Rose. Uh -huh. You know that Chris Bosh is gonna come back for one last job. <laughs> Jet Li's gonna show up. I don't know. But also, it just, they're all, they, it feels like almost like a retirement squad. You know what I mean? Like, someone's gonna sneeze, Rose will blow out his knee. That's just every season. And then Bosh is, you know, his arm's gonna fall off. And then, uh, I don't know, it just, the best is the TMZ reporter. Like, I just was like, that's your job? Like, chasing Dwayne Wade in an airport? Being like, are you gonna call the prom? Like, I'm like, like, terrible. And like, Dwayne was just like, yeah, I'm probably gonna text him. He's like, thanks, oh. thanks so much. <laughs> and you're like, this is the worst job I've ever It is a sad job. Sad that guy's job. gonna see this and weep. I hope so. Uh, I hope it, he turns his attention. life around. <laughs> you know what's interesting too is that like, uh, you know that this is gonna get, he's gonna get burned again. Like Wade yeah. got burned by LeBron. You know he's sure. gonna sign like a three year deal with Cleveland and LeBron's <laughs> right. gonna go to LA. I he's know. like, again? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Totally. I, I do, I would like them together just so I think it will give them, it will give them some firepower. Like they, they have, they didn't have depth last year against the Warriors. If they had some depth. Yeah. Well, the only time you're gonna beat the Warriors if, is if Cleveland could have, uh, you know, grabbed a couple of other players <laughs> to play for them right before the finals. Like they needed seven more players to keep right. up with Golden State. Yeah, yeah, when Darren Williams was like leading their second unit, I was like, Jesus, when did Darren Williams start looking like Paul Giamatti? What yeah. happened? <laughs> right. This guy got big. Yeah. Yeah. I felt like half the squad was like weekend and birdies. You know, they just like <laughs> propped him up and they're like, go, go get in there, Williams. So I was like, is that guy still playing? There's so many players you're like, what? Richard Jefferson's alive? Yeah. <laughs> Not bad. He had a good series. He has a good for series. Whatever. No, yeah. he's a, he's I like him. He's aged very well. Yes. I, here's the one thing I have I bumped when I was like, when I was like 21, I bumped into J Richard Jefferson in a bar 
and I was a little aggressive. I was like, what the hell? And it turned around, I was like, oh my God, Richard Jefferson? He was like, I'm so sorry. And I've had a hard time respecting him ever since then, because I was like a wiry kid. He should have taken my head off. Yeah, he was pissed? No, he wasn't pissed. Yeah, he was, was nice. Like, right. He's like a good, good guy. I like that your lack of respect went to someone that was really polite. I know. Yes. <laughs> That's yeah. a New Yorker in me. What an idiot. Yeah. He should have taken my head off. <laughs> also, all your stories are, you know, yeah. begin, begin and end in bars. I need to go I to know. more bars to meet more professional problem. athletes. <laughs> no, I don't think you need to live your life more like Sam. <laughs> I don't think that's the answer. <laughs> But yeah, but if that was like Draymond Green, he would have killed me. And that's yeah. what you would have wanted. Yes! <laughs> You're crazy. Do you have a girlfriend? I do. Okay. It's Rocky. <laughs> it's Rocky at best. I love Lamar Odom. I've always loved Lamar Odom. He's a yeah. New York guy. Uh, he he kind of came in with he some problems. He turned it around. He's a great story. Uh, he said that there's a recent quote that if, if L.A. never traded him, he'd still be playing the Lakers today. I kind of believe him because that's when all his problems really started. He's the only guy to ever leave L.A. and develop a Coke problem, I think, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But he was in, in Dallas, he, he was not doing well. Yeah. Like, that, that was, he went to, he, you know what happened? I think it was, he was on that trade that where they traded for Chris Paul, got vetoed, and then, uh, and then they were like, oh, we, we've hurt him so badly, we have to just trade him. So they traded him for, like, nothing, mm. which I think yeah. hurt him even more. Yeah, I mean, when you have a serious drug issue and uh, instability and then you go to Dallas, <laughs> ooh, I don't know how you really pick yourself up after that. Uh, but it's it's interesting how, like, I have a I have a, a real sweet spot for him because he played for University of Rhode Island and I went from New York to Rhode Island, so I watched him play in college. And so we're always kind of cheering for him. Like, it takes a real special guy for me to cheer for him post-brothel, you know? <laughs> right, and uh, right, right, right. I still am like, God, I hope, I, hope he, I hope he cleans himself up. But, you know, then at the end of the article, he's got like seven clothing lines, four book deals, and you're like, oh, he's, he's going to be okay. fine. He's writing a tell-all book, but it's, is it going to be relatable at all? He's like, he's going right. to be like, you know when you go back to your mansion after a bender <laughs> and you at talk to your Kardashian and wife yeah. 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 and Kobe won't return yeah. your phone calls? Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. no. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Other people with drug problems will relate to that specific thing. <laughs> yeah. 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 They're just like, ah, just like, I mainly itch on the train. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I think I know what it's like. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing about about being an addict. It's like it, you have to have all this strength to come. You, you're worshipped as an athlete, and then you have to really see yourself for who you are right. when you come right. out of it. And it's like you know, and it all happens in the public eye. Yeah. So it's not like you're going through all those things in front of millions of people that that do like you and that do admire you. So like that fall from grace is happening in front of everyone. That's so difficult. Yeah. Um, I did thought it was interesting though that like. Odom said uh, at one point, like, maybe he'll play in the big three. And yeah. then, like, as yeah. that's like a place of redemption. And then, and another thing, too, he was like, the big three is going to go international. He mentioned that as a thing, which is, like, amazing to me. Like, the idea of, like, Jerome Williams, the junkyard dog in Brussels, yeah. is, like, the coolest thing ever. I yeah. like also that the big three uh, just started. It is now international. Right. Yeah. And they're going to be playing at, like, the Mars Space Station. And, <laughs> yeah. like, he just blew up the big, like, we're just like, did it even work? Yeah, I, don't I don't know. Yeah, I don't but know. now we're going international. Yeah, like, Ice Cube wore the hat on uh, Colbert or yeah. something, and right. now it like blew up. I don't know what happened. Yeah, I think they played in four cities, and Ice Cube's like, "We're going to Amsterdam." <laughs> it's like, I don't know, like slow down a little bit. And Lamar's yeah. like, "Maybe we don't start with Amsterdam." <laughs> <laughs>
That's awesome. He's got a great body for it. He does. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's like lean, he's wiry. Like As a gangly tall white man, I can relate. Are yeah. you a good dancer? Not at all. No. <laughs> but, uh, you think of yourself as gangly? A little bit. Really? No. No, I don't I see I played it. the scarecrow in high school. Don't beat yourself up. I wouldn't go with gangly. <laughs> yeah. No? I would not go with gangly. No. What would you use? Broad? Sexually? I wouldn't use that either, but... <laughs> <laughs> The Texas Rangers refused to accommodate the Astros after a flood. This is ridiculous. This and, th and they got trashed by the MLB. Like, this writer on the MLB website trashed them for doing this. And then it was, it was edited and taken down. So the MLB, uh, you know, run, run in a pretty toxic way when it comes to this stuff, at least from within. This they, is, they should be trashed. Yeah. This, they is, should be. this is, let me just say this. I don't know why I just said that. Because <laughs> I'm going to say yeah, yeah, yeah. it. Um, the, the response from the Texas owner was like, oh, you know, I didn't want to take the, you know, the tickets and the seats away from the fans. Last summer, I went to my first Texas Rangers game. It was 790 degrees. No one was <laughs> there. They are full on building a new stadium. Nothing is wrong with the existing stadium, except no one goes because it's so hot, so they have to build a new stadium with a right. roof. No one is in the stadium. <laughs> oh, and his excuse was, you know, oh, I don't want to take the, the seats away from the fans. And it, it was so disrespectful. Like, you, you start with humanity, and then there's baseball. Right. I know. You know what right. I mean? yeah, yeah, and yeah. then they're like, oh, <laughs> go play in the Trop, which I don't know if you've been to that stadium. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah, that's Tampa, yeah. right? So it's, it's yeah. like, yeah. you know, it was so, I thought it was one of the also, worst Also, Tampa's a little stories. further than another place in Texas. Yeah, yeah, it's terrible. I don't know why that was like, oh, we'll compromise Tampa. Yeah. Like, that's right? the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Yeah. Of. yeah. Where you hit a fly ball and you have to wait for it to get down from the rafters for 25 minutes. Like, that's not like yeah. an easy ballpark to acclimate yourself yeah. to. Yeah, because the whole reason they did it was for the fans to not miss those games. So it's like, you really think anyone from Tampa that's just going to be like, whoa, the Astros and Rangers are coming to town. Like, yeah. like yeah. what do they care? It's not like when football comes to Europe or anything like that. Yeah. They can go see the right. team they support. But they're going to be like, no, I'd like to see two teams from Texas battle it out. <laughs> like, well, why would you ever you know do that? You know what's yeah. even crazier, too, is that uh, Joel Austin is going to do his sermons out of the Texas Rangers Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> A-Rod and J-Lo, everyone's new favorite celeb couple, uh, they are donating 25 k each for Houston. Uh, they've announced on Instagram, this isn't how you do it. No. Yeah. You don't announce, like every respectable person, they were like, he donates a lot to charity. Right. They don't just say, hey, I donate a lot to charity. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it's, true. Yeah, what do you think? You're well, a it's, it's, <clears throat> I think it's helpful to get the word out there in any way, but I agree, you don't want to do it in some self-aggrandizing way where you're like, look at me and all yeah. the money I'm donating. But, you know, I mean, Kevin Hart is donating a lot and, sure. and a bunch of these guys are getting it. So it's, you know. I bet Jeter quietly yeah. donated 51,000. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. I, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's that too. I, yeah, I, you don't, <clears throat> I don't think you have to say how much you're donating, just I think raising the right. awareness in and of itself is probably I would have helpful, assumed right? that, like, how rich A-Rod is, he, he should have just not said it, because I would have assumed and, he would have donated and, more. And that's the other right. thing. With how much money that guy makes, you're like, really, 25 grand? Like, yeah. the, you know, yeah, that's exactly. like dinner for you, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. 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 The whole thing was such a misfire, I thought. Like, you know, again, I'm glad they did it. I'm glad, you exactly, know, it'll, yeah. it's all, it's positive, but the, the first of all, the, it was a camera yeah. angle just on, just yeah. on. <laughs> so weird. Just on her the whole time, you saw like A Rod's ear. <laughs> oh, in she, that oh, I didn't even see an ear. There yeah, was an it ear. It was just like an <laughs> eyeball, you know. And uh, and she was like, and then he was like, yeah, yeah, God bless everyone, whatever. And you're just like, oh, it felt like such a PR stunt. It yeah. felt so yeah, disingenuous. Like a look at us thing, yeah. But A Rod, I mean, obviously, you know. Uh, I don't have a high opinion as a Yankee fan. He ruined everything. Yeah, okay. Here's why I like A-Rod, because he is awful, and, and I, I started, he was so awful that I started to like love him, because right. at a certain point, how much can you expose a person until you just start to like them? Yeah. He was right. so exposed, they were like, you cheated again, and he was like, yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah. I was just like, right, so I like far him. that way yeah. that he's yeah. just, you, now you like him. Yeah, I mean, I like I, it him. went from booze at the stadium to his final year where, like, <laughs> Jeter got, like, a farewell tour. He got, like, reluctant, like, all right, fine, yeah. you know? Yeah. Dude, it was like, yeah, him cheating, it's like, you know when, like, Kramer came through the door on Seinfeld and everyone was like, that's what he does. <laughs> like, it like, became, like, his, like, thing. And we're back on People Talking Sports. We're going to Liz Gonzalez with another thing. It's Wednesday. Yeah. Has everybody uh, partaken in their fantasy football draft yet? No. No. 
Mine was on Sunday. I missed it. I don't know who I have. You missed it? Yeah. I think I'm done. <laughs> I feel like you, yeah, you ended before you even began. What's up? I feel like you ended before you even began. Yeah, no, I'm out this year. I've had a hell of a dynasty, though, I'll be honest. Mm. The pee -pee -pee -pee's. It's time his reign ended. He's, That's he's it. Had a yeah. And yeah. Aaron, I, you, I had to give it up. I had to give it up because it was ruining f the sport for me. But it, fantasy baseball, who has time for that? Oh, I, it turns out I have time for it. <laughs> <laughs> Are you just meticulously checking? I'm currently checking? unemployed. <laughs> I just uh, had That's... to brush my teeth to get here. Well, at least you got here. Yeah, I got I'd here. like That's my toothbrush back, by the way. Egg old, there we go. Yes. <laughs> Well, we're entering week four of the NFL preseason, and already we've had a ridiculous amount of injuries to players that are actually pretty meaningful. Julian Edelman out for the season with a torn ACL. Spencer Ware out with a torn PCL. Uh, Cameron Meredith, the Bears' number one receiver, out for the season. My problem with this is that all of these injuries are happening during completely meaningless games. And my solution here is I think the coaches and the players should get together and just decide that veterans are just not going to partake in the preseason because you know the NFL is not going to cut any games too much money involved. What do just, you guys think? Just cut it completely, right? Why, why even have it? Because the NFL would never go for that. That's, for money? Yeah. The yeah. TV deals done for those four weeks alone. And there's also these crazy rules how they can't even come together as a team in, in, the, in the practice facility till like June. And so I think that's another huge cause of the injuries because they're going full tilt. A lot of them are going full tilt right. in the preseason to make the team. And uh, it's, it's, yeah, I mean, unless you just make it year-round, fight to the death, you know. <laughs> um, I feel like Gladiator more, more, style? Yeah, more violence, I think, would bleh, up the TV ratings, you know. Yeah. Uh, well, that was only one of the new yeah. commissioners of the NFL. <laughs> as, as, as the new view. commissioner of the <laughs> yeah, yeah. NFL, I'd say add knives. Are you gonna, are you gonna cage the football fields and there's no way out? Yes. Okay. Co-commissioner. It's yeah. like the, uh, the old this. George Carlin bit, remember, we said, if, if we talk about what a war football is, we should make it a real war, and I mean leave the injured on the field. Oh, yeah. oh my yeah. God. Just jump over so dark. them. Yeah. Uh, well, this has been a great episode of People Talking Sports. Uh, stay tuned tomorrow night. we got Chris Jericho on the show. It's going to be a great one. Keep. Oh, and Greg Stone, your roommate. Yeah. It's going to be a hot one. Right if that's not a resounding endorsement, I don't know what it is. He's also my buddy, hilarious comic Greg Stone. It's going to be a great one. Stay tuned tomorrow night. I'll beat the Albany Funny Bone this weekend. Big yes. things are happening Check from that, that out. <laughs>